Hi everyone, welcome back to channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, Keycloak customization. Keycloak is a great tool that helps you manage user login and security for your app. But however, sometimes Keycloak might not be enough for your project. You might need to customize it to better fit your specific need. In this video, I am going to show that. So without wasting a time, let's start. Okay, before starting, uh, let me show you my Keycloak. So in the key clock you can see one uh, customer is the uh, ream which I have created and the first the client which I have is a customer it's a you can see standard flow is enabled direct access grant a service account roles are enabled so this is a very basic uh, client which I have created it so now let's start with the actual video okay now let's start with the actual video so now the problem statement is that in a key clock we want to expose a custom rest endpoint okay so how do we do that and uh, let me show you uh, the way how it can be done so it's a simple that we need to make one uh, custom spi so as uh, we have done in my last video and so here also i have done this custom uh, spi so it's a simple uh, spring boot application so you can create this with the uh, spring initializer uh, let me show you the build.gradle so build.gradle nothing is there spring uh, web starter web it is actually not used so these are the important uh, 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 key clock libraries which we have to use okay the test and all which are not being used uh, if you want to write a test you can uh, do it okay and uh, spring boot uh, 3.2.6 version and uh, let me show you the files meta inf services resource so in my last video also you have seen uh, this is the file which we have to create so ream resource provider factory so this is this is the file this is the class which we need to extend so com portal uh, this is the uh, my factory class let me show you so this is the factory class ream resource provider factory so this is the uh, interface which we have to implement okay and the provider id is a custom resource so here in the create method uh, i am uh, initializing the provider class this is my provider class so init uh, post init close and all uh, nothing as such done and here i am returning the provider id and let me show you the provider class so in the provider class you need to implement a ream resource provider okay so here i am initial uh, key clock session so which i am initializing uh, uh, from here you can see and uh, get resource and all uh, these are we need to override it and here this is the magic so here i am exposing one get endpoint like uh, here it is it will what it will do is it will return a map of uh, ream resource session dot get context get ream get name okay so it will return you the ream name actually so we can write as uh, as uh, as anything what we want here but for but for this example i uh, to show quiz i did this okay so this is like uh, without any authentication you can see and this is the second uh, uh, rest endpoint user says login name so here i am checking the check auth means like it need to be authenticated so here i am checking whether bearer token is present or not whether it is authenticated or not else means like i am uh, uh, throwing an exception not authorized okay so here it is nothing but uh, returning the get user so uh, this is what uh, is being used so you can write anything or you can return uh, user or groups anything what you want uh, you can uh, uh, do like this so let me show you some other files so your application dot properties nothing is there test nothing i didn't do anything uh, if if you want uh, you can write it uh, setting dot Gradle, nothing is there build dot i have shown you earlier and uh, this is uh, like spring boot uh, uh, basic uh, starter class but this is not being used so what you need to do is you need to build and uh, create a, uh, a jar so here it is uh, once we create a jar we can build it it will create a jar and uh, post creating a jar we need to copy the jar to the key clock uh, 
directory so let me show you where we need to copy here okay after that it is still doing it okay now the build is successful and you can see here under build directory the lab, uh, the jar is being created so this jar we have to copy inside keyclock so uh, let me show you how it can be done so here i have used a docker compose to uh, to start the uh, keyclock container so let me show you this first so uh, this is my docker compose file so this is as per my last example so i'm explaining it again here so this is the key clock here environment variables are there and this is the key clock directory opt key clock and provider this is the directory where we have to place the file and here we have done the mounting key clock provider and as you can see here uh, three jars are present so this is like a custom path so this is the actual jar uh, as per this example and the uh, others i am not going to explain this is the key clock db and this is the my sql db which uh, i have used in my previous example okay and now uh, let me show you on key clock uh, how it happens so after placing this uh, uh, jar we have to restart uh, the key clock okay so let me show you key clock so once you go here on the master provider info okay so here in the provider info we have to search for our resource so let me show you so we can search it with the custom so we can see this uh, custom resource is uh, visible here so this is the same name which we have given in the factory class let me show you again the factory class yes so this is the name which we have given in the factory class so this is the same thing okay and now let's test it uh, with a postman okay and this is the first uh, so we need to search it by a reams ream name custom resource and then ream name ream dot name so in our uh, provider this is what was the first user ream and name so this is the path so we will test it here so once we click here you can see it is returning ream name as customer so this is as per the logic which we have so it is returning the ream name so our this get endpoint is working so and the next endpoint is with the user and login name so and and we have seen that it is like a uh, it it needs a valid authentication so let's check it so this is the thing and let me remove the bearer token here no auth and to show you so it is returning like a 401 okay because it is this is as expected that it require a valid token so let me give you a, a bearer token okay uh, still 401 because the token is expired so we'll get the token uh, from here uh, from the customer client uh, using client credential client secret we have given we get this access token okay we'll copy here okay yes now uh, you can see it is working so this is like uh, giving the name here so let me show you the logic here again so get user get username so if we uh, uh, if you see the token here so in a token so this is the name present so that's why uh, this name is coming so like this way we can write any uh, rest resources here we can write any type of a logic or you want to customize some behavior like uh, uh, you want to create a user or meant like uh, you want to update a user or you need a uh, a user that belongs to group or you want to return some role uh, something any type of customization which is required which is not possible with uh, with click with existing key clock uh, resources so we have the option to write customize rest endpoint with key clock okay so that's all for this video and i'm going to end this video here uh,
and in the next video i will come up with some uh, next uh, w some more customization thank you for watching the video and if you like the content please uh, like and subscribe thank you